There are about 64,582 videos on YouTube about focus stacking and how to do so from start to finish in Adobe Photoshop. The problem is that Adobe Photoshop kind of sucks at focus stacking. Now, this is not a dig at Photoshop. I actually use Photoshop literally every single day. And for many years, I used to use Photoshop for focus stacking. The problem though, is that it just really is not that good. And in this video, I'm going to show you why it isn't that good and then how to use a different program to up your focus stacking game. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, this is a photograph that I took recently uh, in the Mojave Desert. And I wanted to show you guys this because it is a perfect example of a very difficult focus stacking situation. Uh, not in terms of actually photographing it uh, or you know taking the focus stack, that's gonna be the same for just about every single photo. But what I mean is that there is a ton of overlapping layers. And also, if I zoom in over here on the right-hand side of the image, you can see there is a lot of intricate detail in all of these spines right here. Uh, there's a lot of overlap in between them, and there's also, uh, you know, this blurred out background in between uh, these little windows of the cactus spines all throughout here, all throughout the image. So I'm going to go ahead and start the focus stacking process just like you normally would in Adobe Photoshop by selecting my first layer, holding down shift, selecting the last layer, and then going up to edit and first auto align. I'm just gonna make sure it is clicked on auto, hit okay, and we're going to wait until it finishes aligning. And once that's auto aligned, we can go ahead and finish the focus stacking process by going back up to edit, and then down to auto blend layers. And we're gonna make sure stack images is checked and hit okay. Okay, so now the focus stack is finished in Photoshop. And at first glance, everything looks okay. Um, the cactus looks sharp, the mountain looks sharp, but if I start zooming in, I can pretty easily start seeing some, some very obvious signs that it did not do a good job. Uh, you can see down here, we've got uh, some of these cactus spines in focus and then kind of an abrupt change of where they go um, out of focus. Uh, we can see in between here, there are still um, bits of blurred background or out of focus background and it gets worse and worse the further over we go over here. You can see some weird um, kind of zigzag jagged things uh, where it kind of missed the mark on some of these cactus spines. Uh, over here, we've got this kind of weird splotchiness in the sky. And then we have these just huge, huge patches of completely out of focus uh, background and kind of the tips of all of these cactus spines are also out of focus. Um, so it's really, really doing a pretty poor job all around the image. I uh, can see it just about everywhere um, around where the, there are cactus spines. You can start to see this, these kind of issues pop up all around here. And if I go ahead and hold down Alt or Option and click on the, on the mask for my, uh, for my foreground right here, you can start to see where things kind of go wrong because this is the slice uh, of closest uh, in focus uh, section of the image uh, of the stack. So this should be the closest uh, part of the foreground that Photoshop has decided that uh, this is what it's going to use. And if I start clicking down uh, through each of these masks, we can start seeing how, uh, how it kind of works, how each of these slices it has decided is what is in focus. And you can really tell that, uh, you know, when we're looking at this, it's fairly blocky, especially let's go back to this first uh, section of the focus stack. We can go ahead and zoom in here. Uh, of course, when talking about masking in Photoshop, anything that is white is revealed, anything that is black is concealed. So it's taking this first image here uh, and only taking this section of the image and using that for the focus stack. Uh, the problem though is of course, it's only showing, you know, it, it's showing a very, very strange shape that it is, it is decided is in focus. We're not getting any intricate details for the spines. And there's also some kind of weird blotchiness going on right here in the center. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But of course we can see when we start looking at this and kind of toggling back and forth, 
we can see exactly why we have this very strange look because Photoshop, it's just not sensitive enough to show the spines of the cactus and everything. Uh, it, ju it just doesn't have the, the sensitivity in the focus stacking process or the focus stacking uh, procedure in Photoshop to actually show uh, details through things like this. Now, of course, I could spend a ton of time manually masking things, uh, going through with a brush and kind of manually brushing in each of these cactus spines, but that's going to take all day long. Instead, I would like to show you an alternative for doing this that is going to give you much better results. So let's go ahead and jump into a different program entirely. It is called Helicon Focus. And this is what I wanted to show you guys that does a much, much better job than Adobe Photoshop. So we can go ahead and file open images. And I'm going to open up all of my images here for the focus stack, just click on open and it opens them up pretty quickly. And then down here, I have a few different rendering methods. Uh, this is important because, you know, Photoshop, it does not have any sort of rendering methods. You can only just choose to stack the images and it comes with method A, method B and method C. Uh, and I know from experience that method C works best for these very complex images. And then you also have a smoothing dial right here. And I'm just gonna keep the smoothing kind of right around uh, seven where it was. So then I can go ahead and click on render and you're, you're able to see as it does this, it creating its own sort of depth map for things. And you can see how intricate this is compared to the one that Photoshop gives you. So let's go over first uh, and just look at the whole image and I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and I'm gonna pan over to the right, kind of the problem area in Photoshop. I'm gonna zoom in further here and you can see I don't have any of the weird spine issues that you saw in Photoshop. In fact, the area around all of the cactus spines in between the cactus spines, it is all completely sharp. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to do any manually retouching or any sort of manual masking. It all looks good. As I pan around the entire image, everything looks okay. Maybe one spot I see that is, could use a little bit of improvement is this flower down here. It looks like it probably moved just a little bit in between. Maybe there was some wind going on. And so that, uh, you know, that flower might have kind of been doubled up with the focus stacking, but that could easily be fixed. So let's go ahead and zoom back out to fit the screen. We're gonna go back into our little retouching panel and I'm actually gonna click on show depth map here. So you can see exactly how complex this is compared to the one in Photoshop. Uh, the, the depth map in uh, Helicon works a little bit differently uh, in, in that white is going to be the absolute closest foreground and then black is going to be the furthest in the background. And you can really just see how detailed it has, uh, how detailed it is on the, on the map here or on the um, depth map. It's showing us, you know, this almost three dimensional look to it. Uh, which it's able to create, uh, you know, create this very, very complex mask at just a small click, uh, you know, just, just a, a press of the button. And so that's really one of the reasons why, uh, why I just don't use Photoshop anymore is because Helicon is so much better. Uh, I don't have to spend so much time in Photoshop manually masking things out, or even worse, I don't have to think everything is okay, print out an image, and then when I'm reviewing it, realize that, oh my God, it completely missed the mark. Now you might also be saying that, okay, Nicholas, that was kind of an extreme example, but let's go ahead and test something that should be very, very easy. Here's another image taken at probably the most famous tree in Arizona. Uh, let's go ahead and start the focus stacking process on this one. There's nothing too complex about it. It's got a very smooth and even foreground leading up to a background. So it should be doing a better job. Gonna go ahead and highlight all of these, edit, auto align layers, hit enter. All right, so we're gonna keep all of these selected, go up to edit and then auto blend layers and hit okay. All right, 
And, you know, looking at this again at first glance, things seem to be okay. And I can kind of zoom in and sort of pan around and I could say, you know what, this doesn't look too bad. Uh, but if I go ahead and again, look at this depth map here and click on our first layer, I can see already I've got some wonkiness going on. Uh, you know, why is it selecting uh, these parts of the background to be in focus here? It's almost a kind of, this kind of weird checkerboard look to it. And again, I kind of have the same issue as I move back, some kind of weird sections it decided were in focus that are further back, uh, then back over here, and finally the background over here. So I've got some funkiness and wonkiness around here, this random block over on the left-hand side and some kind of waviness going on over on the sides. Uh, so if I zoom on in, I don't really see anything too bad necessarily. Um, Photoshop did an okay job, but it still, I don't think, gave the absolute best mask. Uh, I can see a couple of strange bits in the water or in reflection over here. So let's switch over to Helicon Focus. I've already imported my images, and this time I'm going to change the method to B. I'm also gonna keep the radius all the way at one, which should give me the sharpest results. Then click on Render. All right, and again, just like that, it was super fast. I'm gonna go over to Retouching, and we can look and see the depth map for here. Uh, and we can just see how much more accurate this is than Photoshop. Uh, we can see, you know, each slice of this. Uh, I could do see one section where uh, this this little bit of sky over here, it looks like it kind of grabbed a foreground section to put in the sky. That'd be very easy to mask out. But again, we can kind of compare this depth map, uh, you know, where it's decided this foreground and the next slice and the next slice should be in focus compared to Photoshop which is so much rougher um, around the edges and so much splotchier. Uh, you know, we still have kind of the same idea um, in between them. It, it Again, Photoshop didn't actually do a bad job, but it's just nowhere near as precise as what you get with the Helicon Focus. I've been using Helicon Focus for the past few months, and I think it is absolutely amazing. Uh, of course, there are some downsides, you know, it being an extra piece of software, I have to add an extra step into my workflow of exporting something and then opening it up in Helicon, doing the process and then bringing it into Photoshop after that, which of course is an extra step. However, I do think it's worth it, uh, especially because my photography style often incorporates quite a bit of focus stacking. Overall, I love Helicon Focus. I think it is an amazing piece of software and it really picks up the slack where Photoshop kind of falls behind. Again, not a dig at Photoshop. I use Photoshop literally every single day. However, I'm really enjoying Helicon. So hopefully you found this video informative. Again, thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.